When I first booked Johnny, it was Johnny and the Tennessee Two, and that was it. That was my show. If I wanted anything to, to last longer than an hour, I had to get some local five-piece Bulgarian band. <laughs> I booked June on a date in, in 1960 in Dallas at the Big D Jamboree. She had never worked with Johnny. He had had a, you know, he was strongly attracted to her and her, and her reputation and her family's reputation, but barely knew her. And then that evolved to, well, why not have the Carter family sometime? And then that evolved to, well, let's have the Carter family all the time. And then when Carl Perkins, uh, started coming back again, uh, we added Carl. And then we had, then Johnny Western was the MC. Then the Statler brothers were added. And we wound up with a repertory company. And then with the skill of Johnny and June sitting down in the creative process where they had a lot of innovative ideas of how to use all these people, to the kind of songs that they would do together. And they came together tremendously well. defiant manner and uh, competence. He exuded competence. You'd never know it because off stage he would seem to be an aw shucks sort of a guy. And when he came down that narrow hallway leading out to that stage, there was a roar. He had to be there and he had to be right in the middle of it. It was just extraordinary. Okay? A lot of publicity, set him aside, made him a distinct entity in Nashville like the attempt to make him the one of a kind, but he couldn't sing, and it was I, I'm pretty sure he wanted to be found, but it was like a cry, it was an atavistic, uh, primitive kind of thing that, uh, that a wounded animal might want to do. It. and the response or enthusiasm from the present audience to really believe it. Uh, maybe it was captured on the album, maybe it wasn't, but the first time I played a prison, I, I said, this is the only place to record an album live, because I never heard a, a reaction to the songs like the prisoners gave. I had a hell of a time convincing uh, the a and man, Bob Johnson, I think it was, from Columbia, to come, because if it wasn't their idea, it wasn't a good idea. You know, this, this concert that they're sitting at, this is the big moment of their life this year, or maybe this whole five years. This is the big two hours of their life, and they're going to let off steam. They're going to release right. some of that tension that's been building up all that time. And that, that is one, one reason why I've done a lot of prison concerts. I've has, had wardens ask me to please come. and. We got problems in this prison. If you could give the men two hours of release in a concert, it would, it would help. And I've seen it help. I've seen it work. And the recording took place with Johnny sitting on a stool with the yellow page down on the floor. And they had run through the, and tried to get some idea of how they were going to do this. And so the prisoners in there just went wild. I mean, they really did. It was like Madison Square Garden in a way. And we were in the audience, my wife and I, were in the front row with, with I'm talking about guys that, uh, you know, the, the week before they might have stabbed somebody. That violent people acting in a violent manner with these crazy lyrics. And that's how he did that song, with no rehearsal time of, of any consequence whatsoever. A boy named Sue shot to number one on both the country and the pop charts, which was very unusual in those days. It turned him from a pretty successful act to a superstar. I mean, we suddenly went from, from a contract of $1,250 a night with advertising at the top to $100,000 RN for one night at a time when that was an awful lot of money. I hear the train a-coming 
It's rolling around a bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. And time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps rolling on down the San Antonio. When I was just a baby, my mom wanted to make his guests feel at home. If that's what they wanted to do, that's what they would do. And I, I think he was smart enough to know that it, you didn't have to do everything like a cookie cutter approach. It, you could do it and make it seem natural. This is what this artist is doing. This is what they feel like doing. And uh, that was the beginning of, a, of an amazing avalanche of what happens when things click on television. It's just extraordinary. He's involved with a project called a uh, a, a gunfight with Kirk Douglas and Karen Black and Jane Alexander. We did shots in Spain and in New Mexico, and, and he was very good. And people thought that he was the next John Wayne. Uh, you know, he had a lot of those attributes. I don't think he liked sitting around for hours between shots and got very restless. And I don't think he cared for the Hollywood stuff that went with it.